So before spoilers or anything else, I gave this a 6, and apparently I gave almost everything for Moonstone a 6 somehow, but I hope they'll make a branch that'll focus more on these types of novels. It has potential and I'll talk about that later. The sequel's already out, maybe the stuff I didn't really like was already solved. I wouldn't know, because if it did I'd give it a mid-7. So like I said, it's made by Moonstone and they're famous for their MOA games and this emo par series, but they're kind of boring half the time and for whatever reason they decided on trying to make this light thriller mixed with some fancy in there, and it came out kind of fun for a while. Basically they're spirits that are called bodashes that very few people can see and there are generally not many around, but they treat tragedies like it's a carnival. And what they can do is they can enter people and once they do, you're basically just getting final destination. So if like there's more serial killers on the loose, obviously more spirits show up just because of how their nature is. And in the plot, the serial killers are generally somewhat unhinged people, with no shit, that get possessed by these red or evil badashes. And this time it's called the Joker, which is kinda come on man, but whatever, we'll we'll I'll ignore it. Uh, your party goes into these dreams of the possessed users and somehow try to kill off the red badashes that are consuming the host's soul. It dips in quality pretty fast after chapter 1, where it leaned to be more campy. Honestly, it was already leaning towards that, where there was way too many CGs at certain parts where it just started being funny instead of some kind of psychological horror. Like a good example of a horror quality dip would be something like Tokyo Babel's prologue compared to the majority of the content afterwards where it just became action oriented. But even so, it's still entertaining until the common story ends, where it just should have ended there. I guess Moonstone just wanted to insert at least a little bit of what they're known for, except it was just not competent. Because even in the true route, it's not like you learn much of anything else outside of maybe two minutes worth of backstory that could have been just added to the common route. The easiest way to explain how unneeded it was is like, the common plot took me around a week, and the routes took me over a month, and altogether is like the size of the common route. So you could just end it at the common route, it's probably the best experience you can get if you read enough of these. Mayfew's plot was pretty interesting when it actually gets going, and it made sense since it does call back from the common route on what she was doing, which is something that they were at least trying to do with Tuni's route, but didn't do anything with it, it just, it was the pure Moe game section. I thought she had the most potential and then nothing happened, so that kinda sucked. And while I liked Mahoro, and there was a good enough premise to do something, nothing was done. So, it's I, it kinda worse than Hatsune's route somehow. At least, <laughs> Hatsune had nothing to do, so it was just the Moe game, so whoever just likes those will just rate that highly. Mahoro at least had something, and nothing happened. So this can be spoilers now, it's actually very short, it's just something I was... Like it was a reason why I kept on going after the common route, and it just never explained. Or at least I don't think it was. So these Budashas can enter people, and they enter the main character a few times. Except it doesn't make sense, because he's already a host, and it was already told that they could... Like Budashas can fight each other for the host itself. So since one's already inside, I don't know how others are entering like that. Like it made sense that Hotsunu's powers couldn't affect the one that was already inside since they kind of merged with their souls and crap. But it doesn't explain why it doesn't have immunity to anything else when his Budashi can actually help out and has been shown in a couple of scenes. So the only thing that can explain it to me is like plot contrivance. It's like no, just don't think about it. So all in all, it was a fun ride. i like to see them try more of these. Sure, I got problems with it and I felt that the routes would have been better as a fan disc or just better written to the point where it felt important enough for me to continue. Because honestly, the common end has its own ending and it's actually the best ending of the five and it keeps it open-ended, it was great. I don't know why they had to mess it up, just have some more porn scenes around, it's like, great, They're, all of these are boring, they could have just ended. But that's with a lot of things, honestly. <laughs>